We have already looked at proportional feedback, where the form of the controller F is equal to Kp x desired minus x. Another type of controller is derivative controller. In this case, the input is Kd, a derivative constant, times the difference between the derivative of the desired input minus the derivative of the measured input. This is more simply written like this, Kd times the derivative of x desired minus x. Again, x is the measured output, x desired is the desired x value. In differential equation form, it looks like this. Given an nth order differential equation, where x parentheses n is the nth derivative of x, with a input or forcing function f of t, we let f of t be the derivative value here. Do the substitution, the differential equation looks like this, x to the nth, and so on down the line until we come to the derivative term. Now the derivative term is no longer just a1, it's a1 plus kd, then plus a0. So the di original differential equation here has been changed. It now has this form here. The difference is the coefficient on the derivative term. We now have the parameter kd, which we can change to change that. Normally, derivative control is often combined with proportional control to have a controller that gives you this form, where the controller where, where kp is the proportional constant, kd is the derivative constant. Again, x desired is where we want the plant to go, and x is the measured value. If you put that into a second order system, you can see this happens. Given a second order system with a proportional derivative control, collect terms, we end up with this differential equation here. The interesting thing here is we have a second order system, and the characteristic equation for this is s squared plus a1 plus kd times s plus a0 plus kp. And in this case, you can choose either of the two coefficients. Since we control the values for kd and kp, it means that we can make the second order system do anything we want. So we can place the poles of a second order system using a proportional derivative controller anywhere we want. In transfer function form, a proportional derivative controller looks like this. We have the plant, g of s, measured output x, that's fed back through unity feedback compared with xd. That value then is xd minus x, and we have the proportional part of that and the derivative part of that fed into the input of g. Usually we do the block diagram algebra here and combine this term to have a system that looks like this. Now the controller has the form kp plus skd and unity feedback. We can write the closed loop system by doing the block algebra. I'm going to let g of s be the ratio of two polynomials, n of s and d of s. And then block diagram algebra, I'm left with this. My new system has the numerator n times kp plus skd and the denominator d plus kp plus skd times n. And the closed loop characteristic equation is d plus the quantity kp plus skd times n equals zero, which is the same characteristic equation as we had using the differential form. There is a practical problem with derivative controls. That is that you have to have a transfer function that looks like this, skd. This is a non-realizable transfer function. The order of the numerator is one, the order of the denominator is zero. Often when these are implemented, they're implemented with an approximation that looks like this. We have the derivative on the top, and then on the bottom we put a pole at a large number, so this value right here is something large. If you make it too large, you may not be able to implement it. If you make it too small, then the pole that you've added becomes too close to the system and can influence the system. But in this form, the system now is realizable. The order of the numerator and the order of the denominator are the same. And the DC gain for this system is still KD, just as it was. We'll see how this practical problem comes into play later when we do some example problems.